welcome to NDTV Profit. You're watching the Portfolio Manager, and the person I'm talking to today is Rajiv Shastri, who is the Director and CEO at NJ Asset Management, which manages nearly 4,000 4, crores uh, uh, under asset under management in the PMS space. Rajiv, thank you very much for joining us uh, on NDTV Profit. Uh, let me uh, start off uh, by asking you, you know, what is the kind of approach uh, that you're looking at uh, with respect to investments uh, and how do you go about uh, selecting your uh, sectors? Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, so, uh, you know, our approach to investment is what is called factor-based investment or quant investment or, uh, you know, rule-based investment. It's known by different names, but the basic uh, thesis behind it is that if uh, we, uh, you know, peruse past data, and we are able to use that data to identify certain desirable characteristics in stocks and use, uh, you know, rules developed on the basis of the, you know, the, the, that identification to identify stocks, then those stocks should uh, reflect the performance of those desirable characteristics. So, uh, you know, these factors which are popularly known, uh, you know, these characteristics are popularly known as factors are basically there are four that are applicable in India, which is quality, value, momentum, and low volatility. So we use uh, these factors to identify our stocks, and then we invest in the stocks that our models, uh, uh, you know, identify. So we don't really go in for sector allocation in the traditional sense, because we are identifying stocks based on the presence of certain characteristics, uh, the factors that we are looking at. And these, uh, you know, we aim to benefit from the performance of these characteristics rather than the sectors or the, you know, uh, or any such uh, capitalization or any such uh, slice of the market. Since you look at factor-based uh, investing or quant-based investing, how do you, uh, you know, determine what is the kind of returns that you are expecting and at what time do you, uh, you know, select? Uh, is it based on data that you exit stocks as well? So, uh, Number one, we don't really look at, uh, you know, we do backtest our models, but it's not from the perspective of what kind of returns to expect, but rather whether, uh, you know, these uh, models have proven themselves to be robust. Now, robustness has many implications and, uh, you know, robustness means that we are, uh, you know, we use parameters to identify these factors. So these parameters have to basically show that they are, that the top slice or the best companies based on that parameter are able to identify, uh, are able to perform better than the second or the third slice. So uh, basically we're trying to see whether they, uh, you know, these parameters are able to generate better performance than uh, stocks which we would not have selected based on this parameter. Now, there's a commonsensical approach to these factors. So, the, uh, you know, the factors that I said were like, uh, you know, quality. When we say quality factor, uh, you know, the thesis behind it is that high quality companies should outperform, uh, you know, no, average companies are those with lower quality. So that thesis is, you know, perfectly sound. What we're trying to do is trying to find a data-based way of rep, uh, implementing that thesis, okay, onto uh, the existing, <coughs> onto the existing stocks. So, uh, in, if that is the case, uh, how do you, you know, break up your portfolio into allocations, whether it's a large cap or a mid cap or a small cap, because uh, you know if, if if you look at quality, many of the large caps will be part of it, but mid caps and small caps will have uh, may fall short on on that criteria of yours. So how do you look at uh, allocation of your money across uh, th these three uh, asset class? Correct. So uh, you know. Firstly, I think it's a, you know, while it's a normal belief that large caps are higher quality than mid caps and small caps, but what we've seen in our portfolio when we identify quality stocks based on data is that there is a, you know, a very reasonable mix of mid cap and small cap stocks. So there's, you know, it's kind of a myth that there are no small cap stocks that are high quality or no mid cap stocks that are high quality. We do find high quality mid cap and small cap stocks. So uh, the mix doesn't happen. Like I said, we don't have any bias. We don't have any sectoral bias. We don't have any capitalization bias. Our only bias is uh, the factor that we are seeking to identify. 
and that factor in our blue chip portfolio we have we have two stock based portfolios a blue chip and multi cap our blue chip portfolio is quality based our multi cap portfolio is momentum based but quality is like the underlying thesis of all our portfolio so even in our momentum portfolio we do apply quality filters just to ensure that on the basis of momentum we don't get stocks that are extremely low quality uh, you know which does happen in many many bull runs mm -hmm. um give me a sense of uh, and then uh, uh, once you do a bottom up approach you select the stocks and is it then after that uh, you bifurcate them into sectors to see what is the sector allocation or you do look at some of the sectors which are running out uh, uh, running up and then uh, be uh, you know invest in them so we uh, you know do look at the sector allocation post facto uh, you know purely from an academic point of view to understand what kind of sector allocation is uh, you know resulting from it what kind of capitalization allocation is resulting from it but uh, you know if we are following a uh, you know an underlying factor thesis let's take quality for example and if i were to say that no i will always have a 10% allocation to lending companies now if i am selecting companies based on quality it is possible that i don't see any lending companies in the top 20 25 companies that i want to buy so if i want to buy lending companies specifically because i have put that uh, you know condition right i might have to go down the quality ladder to identify those companies so i might just take the best lending company which might be 70th in number and the second best uh, uh, lending company which might be 120th in number so instead of buying the top 25 companies by quality i end up compromising the quality of my portfolio by putting restrictions either capitalization based restrictions or sector based restrictions so we are uh, you know our focus is on identifying the factor that we are looking to identify and not looking at trying to you know achieve a certain allocation as far as sectors are concerned or as far as capitalization is concerned um give me a sense of uh, you know your view on various uh, sectors or stocks which are now forming part of various sectors uh, as i can see from your allocation you have financials in your mul uh, multi cap uh, which uh, which is basically 20 20% odd which is there uh, industrials which is nearly 19 and a half it is 12.4% uh, so give me a sense of uh, you know how do you see financials now because you've seen financial run up happening quite a bit now 12 to 18 months run up which has happened uh, psus have been very uh, been leading the pack private sector has been little sluggish uh, but now we've seen some kind of uh, you know book profit booking which is coming into this segment how do you see financials going forward so uh, i mean again uh, you know it's very difficult for me to kind of form an opinion on the sectors that we are uh, you know on the sector uh, strategy or the sector allocation that results because that is not the goal uh, you know all i can say is that uh, you know to this extent is that in our uh, multi cap portfolio which is a momentum based portfolio momentum is a very uh, you know it doesn't have much persistence so in the sense that you have to rebalance it far more frequently then you have to Uh, rebalance a uh, quality portfolio, which is far more persistent. Quality is a far more persistent factor. It doesn't change over short periods of time, whereas momentum can change over reasonably short periods of time. So what we do is that we rebalance the multi-cap portfolio more often, whereas we rebalance the blue chip portfolio, uh, you know, once in a year only. So when we uh, do the next rebalancing, what will happen is that we will identify the stocks that show the best momentum at that point of time. obviously stocks which are filtered on quality first which show the best momentum at that point of time uh answering another question that you asked earlier is that is there do we use a data based approach to know when to sell if you look at our approach technically we never decide what to sell every uh, you know very uh, uh, in a predetermined frequency we determine what we want to buy what we want to own if that's already present in our portfolio well and good if it's not present in our portfolio then we have to buy it and stocks that we already own which are not uh, you know coming in the new portfolio we therefore have to sell them to buy the new stocks that are coming into portfolio so the sell decision is kind of automatic automatic uh, based on what we would like to own uh, which comes from a periodic rebalancing do you so look at the sector of financials as a whole sorry uh, how do you look at the sector financials as a whole means the financials is a very important sector in the economy i uh, how it performs and how it's going to be performing over the next 3 months or 6 months honestly i don't have a clue uh, the fact that it is part of my portfolio means that it is uh, you know moving uh, part of my multi cap portfolio 
means that it is moving uh, you know robustly in a positive direction and we would like to benefit from that movement we assume that it will continue for a while and we'd like to benefit from that movement so that is the result that is the reason why they are there in the portfolio so the fact that uh, uh, you know financials are in the portfolio means that we feel you know at least the rules that we apply believe that the financials will continue moving positively for a few more months um and so you uh, so you you're basically saying that you know uh, it's more of a rule based uh, approach that you're uh, doing it but uh, the sector when you apply such rules do you also look at how the sector is performing as a whole well not at all in fact we apply the rules to a you know to a wide universe of stocks so we start with 300 stocks i'll give you an example of uh, you know a typical portfolio that we construct so we start with you know about 300 stocks uh, largest stocks by free float market capitalization and uh, you know then we whittle it down based on various quality factors uh, to uh, arrive at a reasonable universe where we apply our uh, where, you know our prime uh, factor that we wish to apply which is in certain cases momentum in certain cases uh, you know we continue with quality so we are not really looking at a sector allocation or achieving a desired sector allocation or even looking at a sector allocation vis a vis the index that we are uh, benchmark to we are completely agnostic to all of these and that is why our performance may vary very widely from the index both positively and negatively so it's not necessary that our you know and our uh, portfolio overlaps are very very small so if you see our portfolio overlap with uh, the nifty 50 you know you will see it either in single digits or very low double digits our portfolio overlap is going to be very very small so uh, the idea behind it is to actually genuinely bring the uh, you know the underlying benefits of true active investing to our investors where we are not bound by the index we are not bound by any uh, you know sector or capitalization uh, allocations all we are looking at is benefiting from the factors that uh, you know that we want to benefit by rajiv uh, i was looking at your blue blue chip portfolio which is there uh, you know there we uh, you know you have the top guys one of the stock that's mirroring both your blue chip and the multi cap is hal uh, how do you decide on that uh, uh, and what can kind of, do you look at fundamentals of companies as well i understand you look at uh, you know uh, you know you look at count numbers and how the, uh, it's moving around and quality of aspects and everything but uh, from a fundamental point of view how do you look at an, uh, 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 these stocks okay so uh, of the factors that i spoke about uh you know quality is almost entirely dependent on fundamentals so what is the company uh, pnl and balance sheet characteristics value is a combination of fundamentals and market characteristics because the price element comes in while uh, you know the value of a, the intrinsic value or the uh, you know the value of a company uh, can be decided based on fundamentals but then the market is valuing it uh, differently and we get a price uh, for the company from the market so value is a combination of uh, fundamentals and market uh, information market data uh, momentum and low volatility are almost entirely market data based so momentum is basically the direction of movement whether it's positive negative and how strongly positive or negative and volatility is basically the standard deviation of the uh, you know of the daily movement and uh, how uh, volatile that stock is as it moves either positively or negatively so as far as uh, quality is concerned it's almost entirely a fundamental factor and our definition of quality is like i said based on data and to summarize it into one sentence uh, we think that quality companies are tho- uh, those which earn a high level of profit uh, consistently with low levels of debt and distribute uh, uh, you know these profits to their shareholders so the four uh, fundamental factors that we look at the four fundamental parameters that we look at uh, are roe which is profitability roe consistency which is consistent uh, consistency in profitability across time uh, you know uh, debt to equity ratio uh, as we call it equity to total capital and uh, uh, you know and uh, dividend payout dividend payout is not the same as dividend yield we are not comparing the dividend to the price prevailing price in the uh, you know in the market what we are saying is if you earn 100 rupees how much do you pay out you know what is the percentage that you are paying out so we select stocks based on these four characteristics and we shortlist stocks based on these four characteristics and these are the stocks which we say are high quality stocks 
then we apply you know at the towards the end we may apply various uh, other uh, we, we may use various other factors to decide on weightage or uh, you know uh, to decide on weightage or to decide on uh, uh, you know the final short list of uh, 20 or 30 but the fact of the matter is that the quality factor is predominant as far as blue chip is concerned and it's almost entirely based on fundamentals Uh, in your top five sector allocations, you have IT, which is 24% and above. I think 24.2% for blue chip. Um, uh, it's uh, safe to assume that it's all the top three or five IT companies which have uh, good profitability as well as they have a good uh, dividend payout ratio or they have a capital allocation policy in place which allows uh, money to be or uh, profits to be you know given back to the shareholders. So, uh, see. out of the four factors uh, out of the four parameters that i uh, you know that i uh, laid out if a company you know uh, goes through the first three layers which is roe consistent roe and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, debt to equity which you will notice that most uh, it companies do actually have high roes and you know they are fairly consistent in as far as their roes are concerned uh, we also look a look at this data over a period of time it's not just the last available data but uh, obviously we look at it over a period of time and uh, you know the final factor that we use the final parameter that we use is dividend uh, payout now there might be in our portfolio certain companies that don't pay a dividend at all but they have been very very strongly uh, you know positioned as far as the first three factors are concerned uh, first three parameters are concerned so therefore they continue to be a part of the uh, last portfolio the fact of the matter is Company? that it's possible That I dividend said, payout is zero. I'm saying to give me an example of that. Come on, such companies which you know which fall through or which which tick mark all the other, but except for dividend, in large caps. Uh, and you are part of it because because the factors are saying that you know it's, it gives I, you good return. Offhand, offhand, I don't have the data because it's a small uh, group of 25, uh, you know, 20 stocks in the blue chip portfolio. So offhand, I don't know. Which uh, which of these companies don't pay a dividend at all? But since it's just twenty companies, I assume that all of them would be paying dividend. We have a larger portfolio that we do on a mutual fund side, okay, which is a fifty stock portfolio, where it's possible that you might get a couple of companies which don't pay dividend. So, how But do mostly you... in these companies, you would be we would we would assume that they would all be paying dividend. So if uh, you know if. Uh, investors are looking at uh, your fund. What all she, they should be looking at? Because from a normal PMS point of view, uh, they have the other approach, which is look at the sectors, look at look at fundamentals and approach. But you have a bottom-up approach, which is there. So it becomes little tough for some of them to understand how exactly you are, you know, making your portfolio and how what is while it will be giving you returns, which is which may be at par or more than the benchmark. But uh, you know, understanding the philosophy of the fund uh, or the portfolio becomes little difficult for them so yeah, it's extremely important that people do understand the philosophy that we are pursuing because uh, you know it will give them an idea about what to expect from the portfolio what in a in a uh, you know in a, uh, a very short uh, uh, manner if i were to describe it if you look at our portfolio uh, you know our goal is to make sure that you don't feel uncomfortable with any of the companies that are there in the blue chip portfolio Okay, you look at the company, then you look at the name, then you say, "Yeah, these are good quality companies. I don't mind owning them." Okay, if you don't mind owning companies, then the market volatility, whether the price goes up or down, okay, becomes a secondary factor because you're convinced about the quality of the company itself. Okay, the price might go down, but then you know that if it's a high quality company, uh, it's a temporary phenomenon, and the price will go up eventually. Uh, you know, if uh, I continue holding on to it. so this is the basic thesis that we intend to follow the basic thesis is that we want to own you know high quality stocks now if you look at our portfolio and you see high quality stocks right and you look at the company names and you say yeah these seem to be and i don't have a problem with uh, you know these companies all of them are high quality companies then at least you will have the comfort of knowing that we bought companies that are good okay if over a long period of time it has been demonstrated across the world that higher quality companies outperform benchmarks right so if i own these for a long period of time i am confident that these companies will outperform over short periods of time there may be periods of underperformance there may be periods of ridiculous outperformance which we have seen both of them in the past and but my basic goal of owning high quality companies and being secure about the fact that my companies are not uh, you know questionable in any nature is being met 
What is the average holding period for you for in large caps? Because you said in a multi cap, it, it could be as uh, low as quarterly rejig, which can happen. So in the blue chip portfolio, we rebalance it once a year. Uh, we try to ensure that uh, all the uh, all the profits we generate, all the gains we generate are long-term capital gains. And, uh, you know, there is no interim churn in the portfolio. So, because quality is a very persistent factor. See, you can't have a company uh, which is high quality for 10 years and then suddenly becomes low quality the next year. That's not the way it works. So, quality is extremely persistent. If a company is high quality, it continues to remain high quality for reasonably long periods of time. We rebalance the portfolio every, uh, uh, you know, every one year, but that doesn't mean that the entire portfolio changes every one year. So mm -hmm. there is a remarkable level of consistency, of persistence in our portfolio as well. About 20 to 30 percent of the portfolio changes on an annual basis, but uh, you know, 60 to 70 remains the same. So if you look at that churn, our average holding period ideally would be between, uh, you know, three to four years uh, for each stock that we own. There are some stocks that will uh, last only for a year, but then there are some stocks which would last for, uh, you know, more than four years as well. Would you have made the most of the PSU rally in this uh, market? With this uh, strategy? I think it has contributed. Uh, it has contributed, uh, but it's contributed, I think, more on the, uh, more on the momentum side than it has on the quality side. Uh, so, uh, you know, while HAL has been uh, a kind of a, a company which has both shown momentum and quality, uh, other PSUs may not have shown the, the high degree of quality that, uh, you know, we uh, experience in or we see in other companies that are, that are there in our portfolio. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Rajiv Sastri, Director and CEO at NJ Asset Management. Uh, he was talking to us about his uh, portfolio. Thank you for watching The Portfolio Manager and joining us on NDTV Profit. Mm -hmm.